Hello viewers, I am Will Keith. It has been a very long time, but I am out here about to do another smoker video. And in the last two that I did, I, the only two that I did, I kind of tried to do something like a little bit fancy. However, this time I'm going to be keeping it like really, really simple. So if you guys get a smoker, you want to try like your first thing, you want to guarantee that it's going to come out good. Like if you're going to be serving people or something and you don't want any chance of fucking it up. We're just going to be doing hot Italian sausage, and it really doesn't involve anything, but we're going to be seeing how I personally prepare them to go in the smoker, about how long they should be in there, and we're just going to cover all the basics. And I'm also going to be trying bacon. This is, um, less, this is more of a side thing, and this I might fuck up, I don't know, but I don't think it should. I mean, it should be really easy enough. So, um, I got my tripod here. And I want to apologize because there's going to be some pretty shitty camera angles in this video. And is my hand covering the microphone of my phone? I don't know. Because the perch in front of my apartment is absolutely covered in shit. Because they're just kind of refoculating everything and we're putting some stuff out here. While we move stuff around in there. And then we're going to be bringing the stuff that's out here back in there. There's some stuff from the cars out here as well. So there's just a big pile of nonsense over there that's going to be in the way of the tripod. So cameras are going to be kind of like close up and not great but what can you do all right so now i'm going to show you how i'm going to be getting the smoker ready uh, oh i got a new smoker i forgot to talk about the most important part um i got a new smoker it's a tiny bit smaller however it is way fancier like when it comes to electric smokers this thing it's not super fancy but it's a hell of a lot better than my other one it ha it's digital it has a lot of really nice features and um I'm having a lot more fun with it because the other one was kind of fucked. I could barely make it work. And when I did, it was just a big hassle. I had to come out here every 10 minutes checking the temperature because the electricity would keep, like, quick going to it. Which it's meant to do in order to keep the right temperature. When it gets too hot, it stops till it cools down. Then it starts again. But a lot of times it doesn't start again and it stops smoking. And then the food is, like, weak flavor. And I, I'm ranting now. I'm ranting. So I'm going to stop ranting and I'm going to show you the new smoker. Okay, we got the food I'm going to be cooking on top of the smoker, but here it is. I got two shelves in here because this is all I'm going to need today. Uh, it has two more shelves. You can see the racks on the side. It's a little bit dirty on the inside, but you know, that's how a smoker is. All this stuff on the sides, this is called seasoning. When you get a smoker, you're supposed to just run wood chips through it for a long time. And you'll get the uh, dark coating on the outside. And the darker that is, the stronger the flavor is going to be in the food. Yes, it looks gross, but this is the way. And down there, it's a little bit goopy, but, you know, that's fine. And to stop that from getting goopier, I'm going to clean that off more eventually because I'm a little bit like of a neat freak with my utensils and appliances. So I'm going to try to clean that off better. But I've been coating it with foil and leaving the hole open there. But coating this bit in foil so nothing can get on there. And that's what I'm going to be doing now. So let me get my tripod ready and click in there. I was literally in the process of saying I hope I don't accidentally end the video when I put the camera, my phone, in the tripod. And I immediately accidentally ended the video as I was saying that. So we got foil here. And... I'm having a hard time grabbing it with these gloves. So. Pull out a sheet, kind of measure it in the door. Should be fine. And the thing is, you're going to need two sheets. One for this side, one for the other side, and kind of wrap them down into that hole here. Because this hole is where the liquid is. And you want the moisture to be able to get up into the food so it doesn't get all completely dried out and shitty. So that's one bit there. And now another bit of foil. Hang on. Whoops. Uh, I fucked that up, but it should be fine. Over here on this side, just make sure it's wrapped around the edges. And there. Now... Anything that falls onto here, I can just pull it out, and off it goes. That is a much easier way to keep this thing clean. Now, one thing I very much like about this smoker that I hated about my old one 
is if you see this drawer down here, I can use this to access the wood chips without opening the main door and losing all of the smoke. Because smoke rises, you know, so the smoke's hanging up around here. If I open this, almost no smoke comes out. I open this, all of the smoke comes out. So, just open this. And we got some uh, old wood chips here. Hang on, I got a trash thing back here. So you got the wood chip tray here. I'm just going to stick this on top for now. We are going to be using... <laughs> Apple wood chips because you know apple wood smoked bacon perk goes very well with apple wood. So we just want to grab a pretty good wad of oh god, I have no dexterity with the gloves. Good wad of chips. Generally the uh chip tin chip tray is the word of shit. I'm looking for you want a little bit more than half full. Hang on, sorry, I'm off camera here for a minute, but this is going to be a bit of a longer smoke with the sausage, so I filled that up. Not all the way, but pretty good. Shake it so it kind of evens out, and then that just goes right in here. So if we need to add more chips during the cook, just slide open the drawer, stick it in. You'll see this other slot right here. This is for the uh, water tray. However, both of these things, you kind of want them to cook dry, so I'm not putting anything in there. And this is going to close. The water tray. Hang on. The water tray is if you're cooking like a big roast or steak or something. Something that needs to like stay juicy. But both sausages and bacon. They're kind of intended to be drier meats. Sausage, not really dry. But um... I don't think they should really dry out. I've done this a few times with the sausages and they've been fine every time without the water tray. I got hair in my face. So wood chips going over here for now. And let me move the camera to a better place. Hang on. Okay, so I'm going to start getting the food ready. And I'm holding the tripod now because if I put it too high up, when my hands are covered in meat stuff, it's not going to be easy to get it to the position I want it, so I'm just holding up for now. Um, first, I'm going to get the sausages ready, and they're going to go in towards the bottom. Like, the sausages have to cook a while. They're thick. They're going to be cooking more than the bacon. So this shelf that's in the middle, high up, is going to go down here. Uh, hang up. Down here, closer to the heat. And the bacon, which needs to be more cold smoked, is going to be up here. And let me show you something cool here. You see these hooks? I'm actually going to be hanging the bacon from these hooks so they don't get, like, all wrinkled up. And I'm hoping that they don't fall off of it. If they do, hopefully they get caught on the rack below them on the sausages and don't fall through. But, um, that's what I'm going to try. So, let me put the camera in the right place for starting to cut the food. Oh, jeez. Alright. Behold my gut as I cut. So, I'm going to start with the sausages. And here I have the uh, Aces Hammer Damascus Chef Knife. Well, it's Damascus Blade, but you can actually see the hammer marks in there from forging. And I love the design of this. I got this from my aunt a while back, but everybody uses it. And get the sausages open. I don't even really need the knife for that. Alright. Now, in the smoker is a integral meat thermometer. And now, for this... I'm just going to take a sausage and insert the thermometer into the middle of the sausage and I'll be able to check the internal temperature with a push of the button on top of the smoker. So this is going to go in as is, but the other ones that aren't being used as a temperature, temperature marker, I'm going to split them. 
I'm not going to cut them completely in half. I'm just going to kind of flay them open because this lets them cook very, very evenly and efficiently on the inside and the outside. And I think it tastes better because then you have that uh, smoky goodness all over the sausage instead of mostly on the outside. I mean, it does get in there when you smoke them whole, but it's better if you can have them open like this. And I also just love the mouth feel of them too when they're cooked like this. So this is going in. And we're gonna be doing this to all of the other ones. Gotta be really careful not to get my hand here. Luckily, I have experience with knives. That's with cooking with knives, but should be fine. So just let them, so I'm leaning back here, let them open up into the smoker. I gotta kinda get them closer together here. There's not gonna be room for all of them. I'm putting the temperature one further to the left because the one on the furthest to the left is the furthest away from the heating element. So as long as that's to temperature, all the other ones will definitely be. So just being safe with that. Two more. I'm just applying very light pressure because there's a sharp knife and I don't want it to go through. So just glide it along, get them open up. Get them in smoker. Now these, they might have like different spices depending on where you are, but if you just buy hot Italian sausage at whatever supermarket, you're gonna get these They're already seasoned. They've got salt in them. They've got other seasonings, spices, bit of pepper, and they taste extremely good just by themselves. I don't like to do anything to these. Like these are some of my favorite things. I don't eat them often, but when I do, I fucking love them. So you don't really gotta do anything to them. The bacon, I'm just gonna be salting it before it goes in here. So that goes in. This one has to move over one more. And one more sausage. Okay. Okay. So that's going right in there. I'm gonna kind of stagger them a bit so they're more open because they're kind of close together. All right. I don't want to touch this thing with my sausage fingers, but I can't see the screen. It's I'm using the front facing one, but hang on. You can, I think you can see them in there how I have them staggered. So let me just, this one comes forward a little bit more. And none of them are touching the other one. And that's how you want it when you're smoking stuff. So the smoke can get all around them. Okay. Uh, the bottom of the tripod is getting caught in a bush. Alright. Now for the uh, bacon. So I'm going to take the knife. Set it aside right here. Take the sausage. Uh, I guess I'll just sit that right here. I'll throw it away in a sec. Now the bacon. This might be a little bit of a hassle with how I'm gonna be hanging it up. I'm not sure if I have enough hooks and I don't wanna do more than one slice per hook because like I said, when you're smoking stuff, you don't really want things to be touching. So, come on, get off of there. Oh my God, it's so slippery. There we go. All right, so let's see what we got here. All right, it looks like we have eight hooks and whatever won't fit on the hook, I guess I'll just put it up here. So let me get a slice. This is nice ass looking bacon here. So I'm just gonna thread it on the hook. And I hope it doesn't like melt away and fall off of the hooks. But like, I, I think I've already mentioned that possibility. I don't know, I've never done this before. So if that does happen, hopefully it will fall onto the sausage rack and not through. But 
Either way, I'm doing this because I want to see what happens. So, two slices, three slices. Yeah, like only a couple of them are going to not be able to go on the hooks. All right, there's four. Five. Six. I'm really curious to see. Oh, shit. Fuck. I forgot to salt the bacon. Um, you know what, I'm going to do this, um, how am I going to do this? Nah, I'm I got to fix it. These are coming off. See, the, unlike the sausages, these aren't like pre-prepared in any way. It's just totally raw meat. So you got to season it first. So I'm taking that off. I'll put this over here. Whoops. Alright, so for salt in the bacon, you don't want to go overboard. I'm just going to put a bit on this side. Give it a mush in. Bit on this side. And give it a mush in. You want to kind of squish it in there so it doesn't come like sliding off when you hook it on there. I mean, the bacon is damp, so I mean, that's not going to happen. I don't know if damp is the right word, but it's squishy.
And now with all the ones on the hook, two more are just going to go across on top because I don't really have any choice in the matter. Okay. So we'll see how this goes. Let me get this in there. Alright. So, let me get these gloves off since I'm done handling food here. All right, now I can actually touch my phone and tripod. All right, so we got the uh, bacon and sausage in there ready to go. Now, pork needs to be cooked to at which side is my... There we go. Pork needs to be cooked to an internal temperature of 165. I usually push it to like 170. I don't mind it being a little bit more cooked. I know some people are like meat purists. They want it as cooked as least as possible that it can be like physically safe. I like it a little bit more cooked. When it comes to steak, I usually take it medium. You know, I won't go for well done, medium, medium well. And uh, some people would punch me in the face for saying medium well, but screw you guys. So, that's ready to cook. So I still got all this shit sitting on top of here, which I'm going to move out of the way. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm so paranoid about my phone like this because it's not in a case. I have like a really good, one of those life-proof, indestructible cases, waterproof, all that. But my phone's not in a case because in the case it doesn't fit in my tripod. And I really need to like find a way around that because if something happens to my phone, I will kill everybody in the world and then myself. So I gotta be like extremely careful with how I'm handling this. I can't bash it against something where the phone might pop out of there. Because we got like a five, six foot drop from where I'm holding the camera right now to a concrete ground. And man, I have fucked over. I have had such bad luck with my last two phones. One of them, um, on my car, the front bumper, something was hanging down from like some plastic bit was hanging down. Not structurally important, but just loud and annoying when you're driving. So I got under there with some duct tape and I just stuck it up into the bottom of the bumper and it was fine. However, while I was under the car, the, um, my phone fell out of my pocket, and I fucking backed over my own phone, shattered the screen. Phone, still fully functional, but screen was totally screwed. I am getting a phone call. Alright, sorry about that, got a phone call. Alright, everything's in there. What was I ranting about? Because I know I was angrily ranting about something, and I can't remember what it was. Um... Oh yeah, well, well done, well done beef. I do like medium to medium well. And I did screw you guys. But then there was something else I was saying. Uh, I guess I'll find out when I'm reviewing my own video. Was I talking about the internal temperature of pork? I, I said that before all of the steak stuff. <laughs> I, I have so completely fucking lost my train of thought here. It's not even funny. Alright. Uh, I'm just skipping past it, whatever it was. It hopefully wasn't important. If it was, I'll catch it in editing and add on to it at the end of the video. So, everything's in there, and I'm going to start the cooking. So, let's have a look at how easy this shit is. So, let me, oh yeah, let me get everything off of here. It's starting to rain a tiny bit. That's not good. Oh, yeah, I remember I was talking about the, my, the fucking phones I've destroyed. So, um, I'll get back to it. Let me start the food. Let me start the food. All right. So we close the smoker door. And you see it's got the nice window here. The window's a little bit fogged over from last time. I forgot to clean that off. But surprisingly, like, you'd think the inside of a smoker window would get completely fucked. But it's actually really easy to clean off. The window is generally unnecessary. I just think it kind of looks nice. When it's smoking, the window gets, like, totally blocked out anyway, so it's not like you can see your food as it's going in there. Um, so anyway, let me close this. So you want pork to an internal temperature of 170. At least that's how I want it. So turn on the smoker, hit the power button. Now, some smokers, some electric smokers are really fancy. You're looking at, like, three, dollars $400. They have, like, a full keypad where you can put in time and temperature, just push individual digits... This isn't quite that fancy, however, it is still much fancier than that caveman piece of shit over there. So, first let me 
bring you in closer so you can see the uh, screen. This is a Dyna Glow, by the way. If you want this specific smoker, uh, you probably saw it written there, Dyna Glow. It's on Amazon. It was like 230-ish. Very good. So if I push the internal temperature of the thing, since it was in a fridge, the internal temperature of the sausage is 33 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like almost frozen. I'm surprised it's not frozen. So that's how you check the internal temperature. To set the temperature you want it to, you push this. Now we're at 180. I like cooking at like... How high does this thing even go? Oh, it goes to 275. I like cooking at 250 because anything under that, it takes way too long for the smoke to start going. And as long as I keep like a good eye on it, it will, um, it won't burn. So, temperature is, I forgot to actually set it. 250, now I hit clock. I'm going to put it there for two hours. And I see the red light turns on, and that means it's going. And then not too long from now, you'll see, uh, what happened to this? There we go. Oh, the, uh, the smoke latch was jammed back here. So, in not too long, you'll see smoke coming out of this thing. A little bit out from the door, but not much. Uh, it leaks less than this fucking goddamn... I, I hate you fucking bitch. Alright. So, as I was saying, now that this is ready and going, my phones. Ran over a phone with my own car. Uh, screen was shattered, phone still worked. Next phone, I'm sitting on the couch, right? I got the phone on my lap. I'm playing a game. I'm not really paying attention to my phone. I sit up. Something happens in the game that I want to like sit up and focus. I'm playing Monster Hunter. That happens often. I sit up. Phone slides off my lap. Apparently on the floor is... You all know Harry Potter, I assume. We have had. We haven't actually used this thing in like 10 fucking years. You remember those stupid DVD trivia games, uh, seen it? I'm sure most of you have heard of that. They have them at like fucking dollar stores now because DVDs, you know, who the hell actually does that. But in this Harry Potter thing, there were different game pieces. There was the mirror. There was a ship. The ship from um from the Triwizard Tournament. I forget the name of the ship. But, um, and the school and everything. But there's a whole bunch of little game pieces. And these little game pieces just kind of looked cool. And we got rid of the game years ago, but we kept the little pieces. We just like put them on a shelf and they just looked like little Harry Potter bits because we're all big fans of Harry Potter. So I have the game pieces sitting on the shelf, like in front of the couch, or I have my game consoles and stuff. And apparently a cat or something knocked over the mirror piece, the mirror of Aristad, mirror of desire, whatever you want to say. And the mirror, it's... It's flat, as mirrors are, but on top, it has, like, two wooden posts coming out. My phone falls and happens to land on top of this piece, which somehow happened to be standing upright on a carpet after a cat knocked it down. And so this series of ridiculous butterfly effect events causes my phone to land fully screened down on top of, like, a little two-millimeter metal post. And it just puts a hole right through my screen. Like somebody fucking shot it. With like a really tiny midgety bullet. And so that phone was fucked. I mean same as the last one that I ran over with the car. It worked but it had cracks all over the screen. Oh Jesus. Bad luck with phones. Bad 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 luck with phones. And the thing is like I don't even think my phone case would protect it. From what happened to that second one. I think this thing could be run over with a car and survive. Not that I'm going to test it. But if it landed screen down on something like metal and really hard and really thin, I think it would still crack the screen through the uh, screen protector. I don't know. I could be wrong. I very much hope I'm wrong. It's raining a little bit. I want to make sure it doesn't hit my phone since no case. So, been ranting for a while now. Um, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Been a long time since I've made a cutting video. Still got all my swords. They haven't been like... Stealthily sending them or nothing. I still got them. It's uh, been decent weather. I'm not gonna lie. I very could be. I very easily could be out here making a cutting video right now. 
But man, like I said, I'm not going to lie. I mean, there's always been a big thing about my channel where I'm just completely honest about everything. Regardless of like how bad it might make me sound. I don't like lying. I don't like being fake. And again, I'm going to keep stacking layers of me talking about this now. But lots of people say they don't like being fake and they're like the fakest people around. But y'all know me. You've been with me for a very long time. Some of you since the thing with Leafy. Some of you since fucking 2009 when I started doing this. I'm never going to lie to you guys. And I just haven't felt like it. Making sword videos. I mean, there's no real other way to put it. I got a lot going on. I might have to be moving soon. We can't afford this place. There's something going on that could make it where we might be able to afford this place. But I can't get into details about that. But, um... We might be able to stay here, we might not. And that stress is just like weighing on me big time. And I'm just not feeling like going out and trying to have fun, making sword videos, acting like I'm all happy as shit, cutting stuff in the woods when I'm not happy as shit. And I'm not going to go on like a big depressed rant, but it's just, I haven't felt like it. And I'm not going to push myself to do stuff that I'm not going to want, that I just don't want to do right now. But you know, I need to eat, so I'm out here. You might, you might be able to see, like, some wafts of smoke coming into my face now. It's very, very light, but you might be able to see some coming out of here. I don't know if you can see that, but we already have, like, a really tiny amount of smoke. I'm not, I'm not going to make any promises as to when I'm going to make cutting videos. I mean, at any... Th this is the thing with me. I've said this before. I'll say it again. The thing with me is I'll just be like sitting there playing a video game and suddenly my brain is just going to be like, hey, I want to go cut shit. And I'll just go and make a cutting video just completely on impulse. No thinking about it, no script in it. I'll just think like, what kind of blade do I want to get? I'll pick it up, fill up some bottles, go outside and cut some shit. Like none of my videos are really planned except for like the bigger type production ones like the Bottles Beware, the second one that I made. I, I need to re-edit that because... The software that I use, I made it between, like, every cut, it, like, froze. And I could probably make a third one now, even, after all the videos I've done since I've uh, moved where I am now. So I could do Bottles Beware 3. But all of my videos, where I just go outside, I test some stuff, I do the random cutting, I'm reviewing something. It's all just, it firms in my head two seconds before I say it. And I'm surprised that I can actually operate like that, because generally I am not so good with the speech-talking things. So, this thing is up to 153 degrees. We got a little bit more smoke coming out now. Again, I don't know if you can see it. I'm just trying to bring in close. Smoke wafting out. So, wait, is that 153 degrees or? Oh, no. Huh. It's not 153 degrees. It was um, an hour and 52 minutes left. That often confuses me because it switches back and forth by itself. It's only 87 degrees in there, it says, but it's already smoking, which is very surprising. But um, I guess that's a good thing. More smoke, better the food. Um, trying to think of other random shit I could talk about. Been ranting on about random nonsense for a while here now. Uh, I guess I'll keep talking about smoking stuff since that is what this video is actually about. Different woods all have different flavors. I'm not going to act like I'm an expert at it because I ain't. But every type of different wood is going to pair better with different types of food. Applewood is one of those ones where it kind of does everything. It does pork, it does chicken, it does beef, I think it does fish, it does vegetables, um, probably cheese. Hickory is generally mostly good with beef. However, hickory smoked uh, pork and chicken is definitely a thing, but much less of a thing. And some people will say that it's not a thing, but I've done it. And believe me, it is a thing and it's not bad. But apple is probably better for uh, pork and chicken. Hickory, though, beef, that's what you want to do like 80% of the time. Uh, mesquite. Mesquite is one that when I got the smoker, the first thing I cooked with it, I did it with uh, mesquite. And honestly, I can say that I'm not really that much of a fan. And the thing is, I, I want to mention that these woods, the difference in flavor is subtle. But I know there's a lot of people here who might 
be like, oh, wood is wood, but that's not really the way that it be. Every wood is going to have a different flavor when you're smoking food with it. And like I said, it's subtle, but you absolutely can tell. And if something just doesn't work, it doesn't work. And mesquite, if you look at a uh, sheet, like on the internet or in a cookbook or whatever, it's going to say mesquite's one of those ones that kind of just goes with everything. But I tried it with a whole bunch of different stuff, and I guess it's just not not one of my favorite woods. I'm not a big fan of the mesquite. So I got a whole bag sitting there. I'm not really sure what I'm going to use it for. Um, eggs. Uh, smoked hard-boiled eggs are pretty good with just about anything. And the mesquite, even with them, it's good. So when I'm doing eggs, if I don't want to waste any of my other wood that I like better with other foods, I'll probably do the mesquite. But generally, I'm not going to be using that. And then I have... Um, I'm a retard. Everything I've just said about mesquite, I've meant maple. I'm thinking about the other one I have, maple wood, not mesquite. Mesquite's another one of those ones that's really good with like pork and beef, barbecue, you know, mesquite barbecue. Mesquite's really good. I just completely mixed them up in my head. Maple wood is the one that if you go online, it's going to say that it kind of works for everything, but I don't really like. Maple is the one that I meant everything I just said about. Damn it. Um... And those are the different types of what I have. I got apple, hickory, mesquite, and maple. Fucking M's. Got the M's mixed up in my head. Alright. We got a very light rain going on outside of the perch here. I do not think that it should affect the smoker in any way. It's super light. I do need to get, like, stuff that I have sitting there out of the rain. Like, the knife. The knife isn't gonna rust. But, um, I gotta get stuff out of the rain. The sheath. Oh, shit. Wooden wooden sheath for the knife. You don't want that. You don't want that getting too wet. I'm sure, it's fine. Alright. I'm trying to think of other, like, basic advice I can give for smoking stuff. It's not complicated. I mean, when it comes to smoking, literally all you do, I mean, it's, it's basically a fancy oven. You stick it in there, you turn it on, and it goes. You just gotta pick what kind of wood you're gonna put in there, and that's it. You can put the liquid in there. It's, um, not complicated. What is complicated is preparing different foods properly for the smoker. What I'm doing right now with the sausage and the bacon is just in there. Bacon has a bit of salt. I ain't doing nothing to it. But chicken, if you just stick it in the way I have now, it's just going to be immensely boring. You got to, if you got a raw chicken, you got to spice it up. You got to brine it. You got to get flavor in there. You got to cover it with stuff. You got to make it good. And that's how it goes with most raw meat, because these sausages, they're already spiced, but most stuff you get isn't going to be already spiced. So you got to either look up recipes and follow them well, or you got to have like that foodie head that it takes to know what's going to go good with what. And that's what I like to do. Like what I've been doing is because if you, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm not so good with cooking. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get better. And smoked food I like more than anything else, so this is like a good inspiration for me to actually try harder. Um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what goes good with what. What I generally do is I take a cookbook, I find a recipe that I want to do, and I think really hard about ways that I could make it better or like remove aspects that I don't really like from the recipe. And I kind of just refuculate it to how I feel like it would be better than the default recipe is. And it came out pretty good. I filmed a video a couple of weeks ago after I got the smoker. It was a really long video. The runtime would have been over an hour. I did chicken with, well, Cornish hens, not, a, not an actual chicken, small Cornish hens. I did four of them in like a really fancy way. However, the video was so long, it would have been an hour even after editing. It would have taken me so fucking long to edit. And I made a whole bunch of really stupid mistakes. I said a lot of things that were really stupid. I It wasn't a good video. It wasn't a good video at all. And I couldn't bring myself to edit and upload it just because of how long it would have taken for a really bad video. And now I know a lot of you guys love seeing me fuck up. And I didn't delete this video. I still have it. I filmed it with my old phone so I could use this phone to check the temperature in the meat because I had a Bluetooth meat thermometer. Before I got another meat thermometer plus the one in the smoker, so I I confused myself there, as is tradition. But anyway, now I'm filming with my real phone because I have a regular meat thermometer that works without a phone. I don't know. 
Uh, I saw that Bluetooth meat thermometer at Walmart for like 10 bucks on clearance. And when something's on clearance, especially any piece of technology, you know it's going to be shit. But I figured, you know, why not? And I got it, and it was shit. Surprise, Pikachu. Um, such a nice day. It, it's cloudy, it's raining a little bit, but the temperature is just absolutely perfect. It's not hot, it's not cold, it's just... If there could be a temperature that could be considered perfectly neutral, this would be exactly it. So, yeah, you gotta know what you're doing with the food you're gonna be smoking. Chicken, steak, you gotta bind it in something, you gotta put some stuff on it. Steak, less so. Chicken, if you don't put some kind of spices in it, you're fucked. But steak, it's totally valid to just purist, eat steak as is, nothing on it. That's totally fine. I do that often. But, um... You got to make sure you keep it, I, I hate the word moist, but you got to make sure you keep it moist um, or else it's going to dry out and be kind of crappy. They can't let it overcook and it just takes a bit of supervision, but it's not, um, it's not all that hard. And, you know, I should also mention this smoker that I have here, the internal, the integral meat thermometer can actually connect to Bluetooth. So if you're hanging outside right by the smoker, you can hook it up. And when the internal, te I'm, I'm inhaling smoke and wanting to cough here. I'm going to shuffle over a little bit and move this over here so it doesn't get rained on. Um, a little bit more shuffling. Okay. Uh, the internal temperature, where was I, where was I? If you're sitting right outside by the smoker, that works well. Because when it reaches the right internal temperature, it's going to ping your phone and your know and you can go check it out. Let it run for a bit more if you want to be safe and then stop it. But if there's like any door between you and it, it's not going to work at all. So I haven't even, I, I tried it once, didn't do shit. If I went inside, it was just totally, totally dead, the Bluetooth signal. So it's useless to me. I'm not just going to sit out here the whole time it cooks. I, um, when I'm smoking stuff, I generally come out once every like 20 minutes or so. And just check that it's still going good. Check the internal temperature. And uh, let, let, me, let me let you have a look over here at this thing. You can... Uh, hang on a minute. This tripod is really, really good. However, it takes a while to close the legs. You have like these switches. Which, like I said, is good. It's a really good tripod. But it, it does take a while to get stuff done with it. You can see in the window... I don't know if you can see through there with the phone, but you can see the bacon hanging down, the sausage on the bottom. So, yeah. It's going. And I'm going to clean up the, uh, the garbage bush here. I'm going to clean that up, bring all that crap inside, clean off the knife, and I'll be back out here in 20 minutes to check the food. I don't know if I'm going to be talking more on the video then, but, um, I guess that's about it. Time to clean up my shit. I'm gonna go play Fallen in Order after I do clean up the shit. Really good game. See you in a bit. Snack review! Uh, since I'm doing this whole thing about food here with the smoker, I figured a good way to pass the time while the food cooks and to kind of add more content to the video is to talk about some of my favorite snacks and do snack reviews. Now, I'm going to avoid the super generic shit like Doritos and focus on more unique stuff that I've loved for a long time. And some of it might be really unique. Some might not be all that unique at all, but still more unique than Doritos. Anyway, today I have canned squid. Now this is one of my favorite snacks ever because, you know, I'm a big fan of fish. You're going to see I have my little sushi zipper thingamajig here. Got this for a buck. I love sushi and I really love this. But this squid makes a really good snack because it is pretty filling. In fact, you almost don't want to eat it now because I'm going to be eating sausages in not too long. However, I am very hungry and the smell of the smoke is making me way more hungry. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming here, but it's really going now. You'll definitely be able to see this. You see all that? That's exactly the kind of smoke that you want, thin and white. Um, it's going good. So anyway, these are really good because they're filling for something so small. Like, when zombies happen, 
you raid a store, you can fit like fucking 50 of these in your backpack and you'll have room to spare. And they are very filling. Uh, one container, you got 200 calories, which isn't that much. But that's the thing I really like about these, is that they are actually a healthy snack. You got 200 calories in this thing, which, um, it's not tiny, but it's not a lot either. Um, protein, you got 26 grams of protein in this little thing, which is why I say this would be like really good apocalypse food. It's small, and it's absolutely packed with protein. It's going to keep your strength up and all that. If you have, um, in a more realistic scenario, ignoring the zombies, if you have a job where you're doing a lot of manual labor, this would be a really good thing to eat at lunch because, you know, it's going to get your protein. Um, the one bad thing about it is it's pretty high in sodium, 420 milligrams, which still isn't that much. Like, going back to the bag of Doritos, like a small bag of Doritos probably has more sodium than that. Uh, 10 grams of fat. That's, uh, again, not nothing, but not much, too much either. And it's just like a perfect little snack, and it tastes really freaking good. There's all kinds of different varieties of this. And the thing I like is the value. Like, this thing is a buck fifty, which is really, really cheap for a thing that can any kind of fish, really. So I'm going to open them up. Get a can this shape. Bet you thought you were getting a square can out of it, a can of sardines. No, you get this nice little oval. And... Pull top, don't need a can opener. Thing is, you have to be very gentle while you're opening it because if you yank, you're gonna get the uh, garlic oil all over you. So I generally open it. Like I I'm doing this like I'm doing a sword review. Like I'm intentionally being a lot more detailed than I need to be. It's it's like a joke. I'm, now I'm thinking about uh, President Schwarzenegger in The Simpsons standing there like, that's the joke. I can't do that voice at all. But I like to open it about this much because any further than this, if you give it a yank, it might come off, which will then yank the thing, which will then go eat in the oil all, all over the place. So I like to open it about this much. If you want to dump the oil, you can, but I like to just have a steady hand and eat it out of the oil. So... You get up bits. There's some bigger bits and there's some smaller bits. But if you don't want to eat too much of the oil, you can just kind of slide it along the lid and that will pull off most of the excess oil. And here is the squid. Got a good color. Still dripping some oil there. And I cannot tell you how good of a flavor this has. Like, lots of people don't like squid or fish, and that's fine. I ain't going to judge. But if you do like fish and squid, this is really really good if you've ever had squid before you know that it's very very chewy and it takes a really really long time to eat a bite that's um another thing that I kind of like about this is that it is more of an experience eating it like if you have, I keep comparing it to the fucking Dorito. That's gonna become a thing now. Everything I, every snack review I do during a smoker video, I'm just gonna be comparing it to Doritos. If you have like a small one dollar bag of Doritos, you're just gonna be like um 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 like ten times and then it's gone. This, every little bit is that every little bit of squid you take out of here because of how chewy it is, it's gonna take some time to eat, which makes it more like an experience of eating a good snack than just. Inhaling a bag of Doritos, just vacuuming that shit. But um, that could also be a downside, depending on what you're doing. Because going back, if you have a job doing manual labor and you're trying to eat this for the protein, you're not just going to be able to, like, slip out the back door and down one of these in two minutes. You know, you got to sit down. It's going to take a few minutes to eat this thing, so... Oh man, that takes so long to eat a little bit. I'm not, I'm not going to keep eating it on video because I just got to save it for like 30 seconds while I chew one little piece of this shit. But um, let me see if I can get you a look inside of the thing here.
And you got the squid and the squid and the oil. Lots of cans when you open them up. The oil comes like all all the way up to the rim. So no matter how careful you are, a little bit's going to leak out. That's another thing I appreciate about these. It gives you a couple of millimeters. So as long as you got the steady hand, you shouldn't be spilling any oil. Like I haven't got a drop on me right now. And I'm basically like holding this thing right over my hoodie. So it's easier to keep clean with this than some other can-based snacks. So yeah, I am going to eat these off camera because it takes a fucking long ass time to eat them but really good the brand name is one sec del sol d-e-l-s-o-l i know every time i see one of these cans my brain confuses that name for uh del sin like the unit of time in three below but it is not that it is with an l at the end and they have a bunch of different kinds my favorite by far is the uh, garlic sauce. Some just has oil, no garlic. Some is marinara. So, you know, get whatever you want. Different brands. This brand is the cheapest, and it's really good. So, highly recommend. As a snack, got to give this shit, like, a 9 out of 10. I mean, I always say that. I don't know what would make me give a 10 out of 10 to a snack, but it would have to be, like, descended from the heavens kind of snack. I know, I know the 10 out of 10 snack, I just thought about it, it didn't come to me until now. I gotta get them, you can only get them at like Asian markets, but I will be talking about those in another video. Just wait for it, because you gotta fucking find these things. Just flavor wise, they have the best flavor of anything I have ever eaten. Like, it, they have other issues, but just the flavor, like if we're doing this 1 out of 10 thing, the flavor being a 15 makes up for other issues that it has. So, no spoilers. You'll see what I'm talking about eventually. But, 9 out of 10. Squid, garlic sauce. Try it. Okay. So, the internal temperature of the sausage, according to both the handheld digital meat thermometer and the Integra one in the smoker, the internal temperature is about 157, and we want to get up to 160 minimum. I want more like 165. So after I opened the door, a lot of the heat was lost, and it's going to take more time to get back up there. However, and I hope it doesn't make me sick, it shouldn't, I've got one of these slices of bacon. And now I like crispy bacon, and this is very jiggly, and this is not really my personal thing, but I'm like... 99% sure this should be safe to eat, and so I'm going to try it. And this is one of the ones that was hanging up, so let's see. I'm going to eat around the outside, avoid the really squishy bits of fat, because I am not really a fan of those. So let's see. Okay. The bit that's not fat, that's fully cooked really really good strong smoke flavor that is fucking perfect even though soft bacon really isn't my thing I can objectively say that for people who do like the softer bacon this is really really good um one thing I really like about the smoker is that the top of it doesn't get hot at all only right on top of the vent where the smoke's coming out, it gets hot. The rest of it, totally cool to the touch. Like, I got a paper plate, and I got the meat thermometer sitting there. No worry about damage to any of it. So that's really good because it kind of, like, is its own table in a way. I don't know if it would get hot ever if I left it on for, like, 12 hours if I was doing a big roast or something. But in all of the stuff I've done, done it's never even gotten, like, slightly too warm. So it's very convenient. One thing that I really like is that I can taste the salt that's like on the surface. It's really like melted in there. And so that little salty bite when you take a bit. That, that little salty bit when you take a bite is really good. Mm. 
This is actually way more edible than I thought it would be. Because too soft bacon, it can make me start like gagging almost. I hate it that much. But this is really, really doing it for me. Yeah. This is the way to do it. You get this on cooked bacon. Um, you got a smoker, stick it in there, get some salt on it, get it going until it looks right to you. The thing is with something this thin, it's not like you could take an internal temperature of it, so you got to kind of eyeball it and taste test it. But, like I said, I'm 95% sure this is... Mm, sorry, hang on. I got a bit really bad mouth feel right there. Not going to eat that. Most of this, though, really good shit. Internal temp of the sausage. Mm. After I open the door a couple of times, it's down to 150. I don't really feel good eating it. But, um, you know what? I'm going to crank up the temperature of the smoker all the way to 175. I mean, 275 to just kind of get that done because I'm hungry and I want my sausage. And the bacon should get a little bit better done too. Yeah, top of the smoker is totally cool. I love that. Alright, so while I'm sitting out here waiting for this to get done, I'm going to be reading a book. Now, don't judge me. It is a ghosty haunted house book. But I saw it in the library and I've always liked supernatural stories. No, I don't actually believe in ghosts. I just like the idea of it, reading the books. But, um, watching ghosty shows. When I say ghosty shows, I mean fictional shit like Supernatural or like Buffy, stuff like that. Not like Ghost Hunters. I used to be super into that. But luckily, I grew logic as I got older and no longer so into that. But fictional ghost stories, well, intentionally fictional ghost stories are definitely... Definitely part of my jam. So I'm just going to sit here and read this in the nice temperature out here. I keep saying nice temperature instead of nice weather because it's raining and shitty, but it feels really good. So I'm going to sit here, I'm going to read, and I'll get back to you guys when the food is ready. Alright, so what you're seeing is about 45 seconds... 45 seconds after I ended the last bit of the video, but I was looking at it through the window and the sausage just looked really, really done. And so I got the tongs and I pulled out one of the bits that I flayed open. I stuck the uh, handheld meat thermometer right in the middle of it and it went right up to 167, which is like perfect. So, I don't know if the Integra meat thermometer is all fucky, where it's only saying 150 still, or if the whole sausage that I didn't cut is just taking quite a bit longer to get to temp. But, this flayed one that I got here, it should be 100% fine. So, I put it out. And when I'm eating these, I'm just going to stay out here. Nice ass, nice ass temperature out here. Stay out here. Got a little paper plate. Got fucking fork. And I'm going to sit here and enjoy myself. But... Before I end the video to eat properly. Okay. Mm. 100% done. I'm sure all the flayed ones are going to be just like this. Saying flayed sounds so ominous. I don't know if there's a less Game of Thrones word to use for that. Splayed, flayed, I think splayed is a better word because it's, you know, splayed open. Flayed means like got rid of the skin, like skin dumb. That's different. It's not the same thing. These are splayed open. Cut and splayed. All right. So this is fucking perfect. It's pretty spicy. Depending on where you get your Italian sausages, they're going to be pretty spicy. Um, I got these at Shop, right? Like, if you get these at, like, a super American supermarket, 
they might be less spicy. If you get one at like a proper Italian market, they'll probably be more spicy than this. I got this at ShopRite, which is a big supermarket chain. However, it's a very Italian area. All of New Jersey is. So the food there is going to be more Italian-y than it might be at something like a stop and shop in Minnesota. But um, it's got good heat to it. Not too hot. I mean, I'm one of those people who can eat ghost peppers like potato chips. So no amount of heat usually gets to me. But these are pretty perfect. It's got a really nice cooked look, smoked look. And the mouthfeel is perfect because mouthfeel is very important. I did good. I'm going to eat two of these, I think. And wrap up the rest in foil for a, another time. I didn't even get to read my book at all because... I decided to check the internal temperature like immediately, which I'm glad I did because I might have burnt these if I let them go and if I left them going in here. So it says 154 now for the whole sausage. I don't know if I should pull it out and test the handheld meat thermometer or if I should trust the integral one. I think just because it's fatter, it's going to take more time to get to temp. All of these, I don't know if I should pull them out yet or if I should just leave them in there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, uh, I'm going to take the temperature and bring it down to like 180 degrees. And this thing isn't going to heat up anymore. It's going to just slowly cool down until it gets to 180. What, I mean, before it gets there, I'm probably going to turn it off and put this stuff away. But now it shouldn't burn them any more than they're already cooked. That is so good. What I really like about these sausages is they take nothing. You just get hot Italian sausages. If you don't like heat at all, they also have sweet Italian sausages cooked the same way. No difference. But, um... They're already spiced. Stick them in the smoker. You don't have a smoker, you know, stick them in an oven, stick them in a pan, and they're going to come out good enough. So, you don't need to do anything to them. If you get a smoker, it's your first day with it. You just finished seasoning the smoker. You got people coming over at night or something. You can stick these in there. No experience with the smoker whatsoever. As long as you have a meat thermometer, you're going to be able to make good-ass sausages. And, um, that's about it. So, thanks for watching everybody, and I'm going to try to make more smoke videos, and when I can, more sword videos. Like I said before, it's just, when I feel like doing something, I'm going to do it, and that's about it. Thanks for watching everybody, and if you got a smoker, I would highly recommend to try in the smoked Italian sausages. It's just really easy, and it's a really, really good flavor. Use the apple wood. You can also use hickory if you want. Hickory with pork is okay. It's not exactly recommended, but I like hickory on most things. So, um, hickory or mesquite. Mesquite, too, was really good with pork. Just use your own discretion, and I'll uh, see y'all whenever. Have a great day, or night, whatever it is. I don't know your time zone.